few moments to get to know the German noun a bit better. The German noun has gender. That is, it's either masculine, feminine, or neuter. As we'll, as we'll see in a few moments, the gender of a German noun isn't necessarily the same as the gender of the object in reality. Now, the gender of a noun is indicated by the definite article. So, for instance, a masculine noun will be preceded by der. A feminine noun could be preceded by d. A neuter noun could be preceded by das. In addition to gender, a German noun will indicate number. A German noun is either singular or it is plural. So, let's look a little bit closer at this. A German noun, if it is singular, will either be masculine, feminine, or neuter. It can be preceded by the definite article der, die, or das. If a German noun is plural, it will only indicate the number. It will not indicate the gender. Therefore, it will only be preceded by the definite article D. Now this concept is sort of familiar to us as English speakers. Let's look at the combination the man. It's preceded the, the noun, it's a singular noun, is preceded by the definite article the. Now, and that's sort of where the similarities break down. If we look at English, it doesn't tell us much about the quality of the noun. It doesn't indicate whether the noun is singular or plural. It doesn't indicate whether it's masculine, feminine, or neuter. We assume, since we're speaking about the man, that it's going to be a masculine noun. German, however, makes this, tells us a little bit more information about the, the, the quality of the noun. So we have the definite article, der. We know that from our prior discussion that der indicates the masculine gender of the noun. Now since it's der Mann, we also know it's going to be singular. So it's a masculine singular noun. Same thing with die Frau, or the woman. Definite article tells us that the noun that follows after it will be a feminine singular noun. Now, das Auto, or the car, is the same thing. The definite article indicates that the noun following it will be a neuter singular noun. Now, the problem here that maybe you're, you sort of see already is, well, how do I know if a noun is going to be masculine, feminine, or neuter? And sometimes it's easy for us to assume that, or it makes sense. For instance, this example, der Mann. Now, we're talking about a man, and uh, logically, the man is going to be male. And this sense, German supports us in our assumption. Definite article is a masculine singular, indicates that the noun that follows it is going to be masculine singular. And indeed, it's a male uh, that we're talking about, so that makes sense. Now, the same thing with die Frau. The definite article is going to, indicates that the noun that's going to be following it is going to be a feminine singular noun. And it, in and indeed it works out that way. We're talking about a female and it makes sense that the noun that indicates this woman is going to be a feminine singular noun. However, this way of thinking, uh, sort of drawing tight one-to-one -one connections between the language and reality don't always work out. So, for instance, let's take a look at the next noun, das Mädchen, the little girl. Now, 
we know from our experience in reality that little girls are going to be female. However, uh, in the German language, uh, the noun that describes this little girl is going to be neuter singular, das Mädchen. So there isn't a one-to-one -one comparison between the language system and the reality that this language system describes. So this tells us or suggests to us that when we learn German vocabulary, not only do we need to know the, the word, the, the noun, memorize that, but we also need to know the definite article or we need to know whether this noun is masculine, feminine, or neuter. We need to memorize that in addition to the noun that we memorize. This is very, very, very important for uh, later uh, uses of the language, especially adjective endings. So, uh, sometimes it makes sense There'll be a connection between the reality and the language system. Sometimes there won't be. Uh, German won't always help us out. However, there are a few tricks that we can employ. So if we have a noun that ends in IN, that will automatically change the noun to a feminine. So dash student, the student, which would be a masculine singular, if we add an IN ending onto it, it will change it to a feminine singular, die Studenten. Now, same thing with UNG endings. If we ever have any noun, if you ever see a noun that has UNG ending, this noun will always, always be feminine singular. Same thing with nouns that end in height or kite. Um, die Krankheit, the illness. This will always, always be a feminine singular noun. So, now another thing that we need to know about German nouns is that a lot of times large nouns are composed out of uh, smaller individual nouns. So these larger nouns, these compound nouns, um, what gender are they? And what we need to look at is when we have these large German nouns, we need to take them apart, separate them, and isolate the last noun in this compound noun. And that noun will be, the gender of that noun will be the gender for the whole larger compound noun. So let's look at das Bier, the beer, neuter singular, and der Garten, the garden, masculine singular. Now we want to put these two nouns together to make Biergarten, a place where people go in the summer to drink beer in the evenings and talk with friends. So we have a neuter singular noun and a masculine singular noun. So the last component in this compound noun will be der Garten, which means that this place where we go to drink beer in the summer would be a masculine singular noun, der Biergarten.